Knights HQ, brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training. Highly skilled labour hire and real world training for engineers, trades and construction. Hi and welcome to the Knights HQ podcast, brought to you by Maxwell Recruitment and Training. Highly skilled labour hire and real world training for engineering, trades and construction. I'm Jay Nelson and my co-host, as always, Nabiak's favourite son, (laughs) Matt Croker. How you going, mate? How you going? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited for today. I've got a good mate of mine, one of Knight's best forwards at the moment, my good mate, Mitch Barnett. How you going, Barnes? Boys, thanks for having me. Going good. What's yeah? happening? Nah, nah, bugger. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't, don't be. Don't be. It's good, mate. You, you, you'll thrive at this. Uh, so, a bit of a recap of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we've got uh, a player quiz, which should be very interesting to see how well you know your own career there, Barn. Uh, we've got a recap of our last game against the Raiders and looking ahead to the rest of the season. Uh, we're going to have a chat about Bunny's time at the Knights, a bit of a few highlights of the things you've done uh, since you've been here. Uh, we're going to discuss some rep round. Uh, obviously, that's this round. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on, including Origin. Uh, we've got a new segment, Over or Under. So that should be good. And uh, to finish, uh, we've got a uh, Insta story requesting, or we put out an Insta story requesting people's questions for you, Barn. So, um, look, there's been a couple questionable characters <laughs> type into yeah. us, let's be honest. But, uh, no, it should be good. So that's uh, what's coming up. Mate, we're just going to get straight into it, and we're going to start off on a player quiz. So today we've, we've constructed 10 questions, right, and they got five bonus points. So your score is going to be out of 15. How well are you reckon you're going to go, Barnes? Oh, probably no good. I've had a few head knocks in my <laughs> <laughs> I, reckon, um, I reckon you'll actually go really well at this. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not the one to sort of watch my games back or anything, so it's, uh, I, think, I, don't know, I don't know how good the memory will be. I think, I think you'll kill it. I'll, I'll start off, JJ. Yeah, so the first it. question, mate, maybe an easy one. You made your debut back in round 22, 2015. Can you remember who it was against and where? Yeah, I can. It was a Monday night. Canberra uh, against the Tigers. Yes, yes. Now, here's here's your first bonus point. So, you're one from one. Mm-hmm. Your bonus point was you started in the back row. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Who was the other back rower? Ah, oh, jeez. I come in for C, so it would have been... Oh. I'll give you a hint. We played him on the weekend. Oh, yeah, early white ad, yeah. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was Josh Papali. Oh, it was Papa. Yeah, yeah, he started in the back row with you. It was Papa, yeah. So you're one from two. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, mate, when you made your move to Newcastle in 2016, uh, how many games did it take for you to score your first try? Oh. Um, I'm going to say two. Oh, correct. Spot on, spot Bang. On. Who two. was it against? Uh, I know this one. Uh, it's against the Dragons. Yes. Yes, uh, man's on fire. I don't so, know if that was a bonus point. So no. you actually, you're two okay, I've gone rogue. Yeah, three from three. Yeah, three. Yeah, I, I tell Frizz all the time. I run over him. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, but it was against the drags. That's all. Look all right. for this podcast. Let's go with ran over Frizz. Yeah, and Frizz ran. will Perfect. be our next guest yeah. too. So we'll bring it up. On him. <laughs> all right, question three, Barnes. So you're two from three at the moment, mate. In what year did you score your most tries in a season? Ah, uh, God, uh, that would have been. There's been so many seasons 20, with so many tries. 2019. <laughs> oh, nice. on the money, it on was, the money. Yeah. And here's your bonus question. You know what's coming. How many did you score that year? Oh, wouldn't have been many. Maybe seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's good, man. He is good. He is good. That is four That's from it. five. On Mitch fire. All right. Can you give us an estimate or the closest answer you can to your goal kicking conversion percentage for your career? <laughs> I reckon you'll know this because it gives KP a bit of stick at training yeah. about how bad is it. Oh, jeez. Look, there's there's two percentages. Um, Barry Tui tries stitching me up and says I'm seventy nine <laughs> something, but I swear I'm like eighty three <laughs> point something percent. Ooh, no, we've, we've got something else. Oh. We've got seventy six. Seventy six to be precise, Barry's. or seventy six point one nine yeah, to be precise. Yeah. But being a you know a media guy, photographer, video guy, mm. your goal kicking. There's a shot of you goal kicking at I think it was Gosford against the Warriors. Yeah, sunset. Mate, one of the best shots oh, of rugby we've ever right. seen. That's right. Yeah. That's that was right on. Before we go on to that, yeah, okay. I just want to get back to the percentage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you type it in Google, my percentage was wrong. They give me a miss early in my career, which I never had. Right. Um, that's where me and Barry get mixed up. Okay. That could have been corrected. My percentage could well and truly be 76%, but okay. I'm holding on to 80, right? 
Die had, with the uh, live ones. Yeah, Die yeah. with the so live. So officially 76. Unofficially. 80. Well, I'm back in my team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in my team, mate. All right, yeah, Buns. Nah. You're, uh, what, what would that be, mate? What, what would you be there? You'd be five from six. Okay, we're going on to the fifth question here. Bit of a funny one. How many games have you missed through suspension? Oh, <laughs> this only popped up the other day. Uh, it's over 10. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, God, I don't want to say 15, but. No, it's a bit more. It's more. <laughs> It's not 20. <laughs> it's a bit more. <laughs> it's 22. Yeah, well, it said from 2013, so maybe you missed some in I junior missed, career. Yeah, I missed um, a few in 20s and um, cut, but I'm pretty sure – oh, my God, I hope it's not 22 in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next one we got here is in 2015, New South Wales Cup. You, you were player the player of the year, year yeah, and yep. you're in the team of the year, right? So who was the other back rower in that team of the year? Oh god Give you another hint We did verse him on the weekend again I'll give you another hint He's coming to the Knights next year Oh Adam Elliott Adam Elliott Was he? the other back rower Yeah in 2015 When you made the team of the year For the New South Wales Cup Yeah right I didn't know that See I uh, Yeah I was thinking um, Because Fitz had a good year that year too Yeah Um, And Yeah I had no idea then Yeah that's right We'll just divert quick Player of the year What was that like? Yeah it was good Um Look, I, I was sort of I was out to impress. Um, I was f- fresh out of twenties um, at that stage, and we had a stacked team, so yeah. it was a lot easier for me to make that transition. Um, I'd played a few games, uh, like while I was in my second year twenties, and um, making that transition was sort of a lot smoother for me because our team was stacked. Like yeah, we, um, we had. The difference between a hard nose, no sort of forward pack, and some really gunny outside backs at the time. So yeah, that that was a smooth transition for me, and it, in a way, I um I sort of reaped the rewards of being in a good side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, it was very enjoyable, but and then yeah, I was fortunate enough to debut. You're after not giving that. yourself enough credit, mate. You would have had an outstanding year, I guarantee it. I tell you, mate, I was uh, running off Mitch Cornish, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, he he was carving up at that stage. Yeah. So it was like I said, it was a lot easier, mate. We're on to the seventh question. A bit of a milestone game in your fiftieth NRL game. You scored a double. Do you remember that? Fiftieth NRL game. It was yes. against the Titans. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember how you scored your tries? Because here are the two questions: Who kicked the ball for you to score your first try? Oh, that's right. I did. I thought I got intercepted around the field. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you'll tell your young fella, yeah, Nate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was it someone like. Oh, it wasn't like Nick Meany. It, it, it was. It was Means. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. Means. Okay, here's your bonus point. Your second one. You scored off a bard and you who passed you the ball? Danny Levi. Danny Levi. Yeah. Danny Levi did. Ding did ding. That, ding yeah. ding. Two from two. Well, it was the only time you used to pass it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Righto, mate. On to the uh on to the eighth question. Your hundredth NRL game. Another milestone. Against the Tigers. Where yeah. was that game played? That was Magic Round. Hey, yeah. yeah. See, I thought I would have tricked him oh, with nah. the Magic Round. Nice no, over Tigers. Yeah. Oh, I was gutted that game. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was all pumped up all week and uh, Magic Round big time. And then we had a shocking first half. Yeah. And then, yeah, just couldn't hold the ball in that second half. Just on them milestones, Barn, like when you make your 50 and then it would have went so quick until you made your 100th. What's it like? Yeah, it's sort of. Um, and it's a bit surreal. Like you, you never expect that them milestones to come along. Um, and look, people go on to play two hundred and three hundred. Like that, that's you know, um, obviously a lot higher sort of achievements. But the hundreds, like the first real big one um, yeah, yeah. of your career. Everyone, I mean, if you play a hundred NRL games, you're, you know, you, you're sort of a really good first grader. So yeah. and you sort of get established then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it was sort of good for me to reflect on all the hard work that had gone in, um, you know, especially when I, I look back on my junior sort of days and like for people like my mum and that who would um, take me to all my games mm. and, you know, they'd put in all the hours, driving you around and doing your washing and all that sort of stuff. It's sort of – that's where you can reflect and think about those times. And, um, yeah, so it's was, it was something I'm real proud of and um, hopefully we've got – 
one or two more milestones. In yeah, but, uh, one, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, need, need to keep the suspensions down. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, well, yeah, something people might not know about Barney is that he grew up in Wingham, which is not far where I grew up. So I've always sort of looked up to Barney. But the thing about those country towns is the towns are pretty far away. So some days, you know, Barney might be playing in Port Macquarie, which is a 45 you know, hour drive. And back then when you're playing juniors, you're kicking off at 9 o'clock and you sort of got to get there at, you know, quarter past eight. Yeah. So you're leaving pretty early. So it's a big sacrifice, um, as you said, mate. And it's pretty special when you do look back on them and you debut and then, you know, you make your 50th and then your 100th and sooner or later you'll be at your 150th. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not not only that too, Croaks. Um, when you're from where we're from, um, you know, the Manning Valley mm. region, oh, you're always told as a kid you're not going to, like, you, there's a slim chance you're going to make NRL or, you know, if you do, you know, it's a long road there or whatever it is. Um, you know, we don't, you know, when you look back on the people who've made it from that area, some of them have done really well. You know, you look at Boyd Corners, Danny Badiris, yeah. Latrell Mitchell. Even Latrell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like have done amazingly well. And um, I'm sure they can tell you all the same. They're always probably told, oh, yeah, you know, not many people make it. They you get people come around your school and there's a certain percentage of people mm. that aren't yeah. going to make it and it crushes a lot of kids. But yeah. for us, we get to sort of um, live out our dream and yeah. it, it does encourage kids to you well, know, chase theirs. Well, it's funny from an outsider perspective, obviously I'm not in the playing group, but you can see similarities between your how you play and, and approach the game and how Croaks does. Mm. So maybe that's geographical. Maybe that's just how you guys have been brought up in the area because you look at your two styles of play it's very hard working. It's just ripping in, doing what has to be done, getting, you know, rolling the sleeves up. And that's, you know, there's got to be a connection there with what you've just said with where you're from. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just, I think that that whole area, it's a hard work and sort of area. Um, yeah, blue collar people. Yeah, definitely. And, um, mate, everyone sort of worked during the week to play rugby league on the weekend. Mm. And as a kid, you went to school and you played rugby league every <laughs> afternoon. Like yeah. You play at lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and any chance you got, mate, you probably weren't allowed to tackle at school, but no, you played tackle. Yeah. <laughs> you do it out the back <laughs> behind the buildings. Yeah, so it's a very big uh, sort of rugby league place. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's where we uh, we get our similarities, I guess. We've got very similar upbringings. Um, yeah. Yeah, both farm boys. So yeah. it's um, very. Uh, you, you can see it. You can definitely see it with how you guys <laughs> approach the game, and even like you know preparation details. Like you know, as I said, as an outsider looking in, you can definitely see you two have got yeah. that sort of that edge about you. I remember definitely. looking up to Barney. I remember because he used to when he was down at Canberra. He used to play with I had a good mate um, Jordan, and his older brother used to play with Barney. Yeah. I remember watch, watching Barney play Toyota Cup and yeah. thinking because Barney's a couple of years older than me, and I can clearly remember sitting on the lounge going. I'll lead a muesli bar because that'll get me fit and healthy. And yeah. one day I'll be playing under 20. Yeah, no, no, I'm uh, yeah. lucky enough to share the footy field on the yeah, NRL Living stage. the dream now. That was yeah. always the the first sort of thing you wanted to do was play 20s. Because yeah, like, yeah. it was all televised back then and yeah. it was a lot – like, it was a lot sort of bigger deal. Like, it was – that was supposed to be the transition into first grade. Yeah. Um, I don't think the NRL got many numbers from it. Well, the numbers they wanted to, but so it was always televised. Like every weekend, you you know. Yeah, they televised heaps of them. Yeah. yeah, like we were um a couple of years before me. Uh, all the Canberra sides were like I think they won it a couple of times and that. So yeah. Canberra were like the Broncos got every sort of TV game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I we were lucky, fortunate enough to you know be on TV and yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I remember I was lucky enough the very last year they did the. The MYC Tour out of Cup, that was my first year of 20s. Yeah, gotcha. So I got to experience that. And the cool thing with that, and like Barney will testament, is when, say, the NRL boys are playing in Townsville, the under 20s boys are playing in Townsville. Yeah. So when I made my 20s debut, it was actually at 1 300 small stadium. Yeah, nice. Yeah, before the NRL boys would have been versing the Cowboys. So you get to travel a lot. And it's it's a good experience, eh, yeah. Barney? Yeah, because it definitely. sort of does teach you a little bit when you're coming yeah. into Did it. Did it help the transition between being yeah. sort of in that, into first grade? Oh, 100%. And yeah. um, not only that, you got the Warriors. If you ever yeah. were fortunate enough to go to New Zealand, like who I was uh, for 20s, like – you had to experience like they they had a crowd over there for twenties. Yeah. You don't usually get crowds at the twenties, but yeah. they'd be stacked and you know, they'd be hurling abuse. Yeah, probably <laughs> proper, right? And, yeah. Uh, like the Warriors boys were always gun then. They were you know, they're big, strong, fast, yeah. athletic yeah. and yeah, so you got that sort of experience of going over to another country. Yeah. So the yeah. night out afterwards would always be fun too. You're freshly <laughs> eighteen, you're buzzing <laughs> to go out. Wouldn't remember I'm that. a TV star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. don't remember we had to wake up for a bus trip the next day after a game. We had to catch the bus to the airport. We had to wake up at four AM. 
Ooh. Oh, that would have been a punish. <laughs> it was some dusty boys. A couple of power aids at the uh, at the airport yeah. for what eight dollars a bottle or something. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. Back to the quiz. We sort of diverted. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't well, know. Well, speaking of televised games, your Knights debut. Yes. Right. You had two captains. Do you remember who the two captains? Who were, were? they? My Knights debut. Had Knights two debut. Captains. Yeah. So there was two blokes that short shared the captaincy. Just trying to think who was there at the time. Uh, jeez. You're going pretty well up until this point. I yeah, reckon. this is this one's got me, but I'm going to go with. Uh, I want to say Hocko, but yes, Hocko was yeah, one of one. them. Hocko yeah. was one of them. Yeah, right. and I'll, I'll give you a hint. The other one was a forward. It's a forward. Um, it was a forward pack. Tough man. Tough, tough man. Oh, Jeremy Smith. Jeremy yeah. Smith, yeah, of course. Yeah, yes, Jeremy Smith. Right, on, mate. This is the uh, last and final question. You're going pretty good. This will this will stump you. I had to do a bit of research for this one. How many New South Wales Cup games did you play for Canberra? Oh, it's in the 40s, eh? Yes. Um, I don't know the exact number. I'm going to have a guess. I'm going to say 43. Oh, you were pretty close. It was 41. 41. Was 41. That's yeah. pretty good there. All right, my bonus question. Last one. Last one of the player <laughs> quiz for Mitch Barnett. He knows himself pretty well. How many tries did you score in your New South Wales Cup career? Oh, um, there's a few, eh? Yeah, uh, there's a couple. <laughs> uh, what, two years, three years? Uh, I'm going to say 12. Oh, bum bum. Nah. There's only five. Oh, was it? Well, that's what I got on the sheet, yeah. Oh, I thought it was... Got <laughs> unless, unless, on <laughs> <laughs> when you said oh. there was a few, I thought, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I must have Literally a, a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I must have set a lot more up, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Selfless, mate. Yeah. It's selfless. You're selfless. Oh, it's sad hard to remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a while ago, a while ago now. Well, it was nearly... Yeah, it was nearly 10 years ago for me. Yeah, um, well, 14 yeah. and 15 were your, your, yeah. your years in... Uh, yeah, it's getting eight, nine years ago. New South Wales Cup. Getting on. on. Like, I've had a few back concussions, yeah. actually. So, How are you feeling after the weekend, mate? We'll talk about that for a little bit, eh? Yeah, obviously disappointing, Crokes. Um, you were out there. Mm. Um, mate, when, you're, when you're in a rut like we are, you just find ways to lose. Yeah. Um, which, you know, unfortunately, um, I've been around long enough to sort of understand that. Um, but, man, we're... we're, we're that that performance here in the weekend is a more Newcastle Knights performance in terms yep. of effort. Um, and if we can hold on to that and get one or two things right um, with our smarts, I guess, and um, the way we sort of approach some certain things in our attack, um, the, then results will turn. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I thought um, across the board that effort's – Something we've got to hold on to. Can I can I ask a question? So you debuted at the Raiders. What's it like? And you've only ever played for the Knights since. What's it like when you go back to GIA? Is it a weird sort of feeling, or is it the Knights always feel like home? Um, Knights do feel like home. Yep. But there there is a uh, a weird feeling, like um, with a bit of nostalgic sort yeah, of vibe. Yeah, yeah. like because Canberra. If I didn't go to Canberra, who knows? I probably wouldn't be playing in a Yeah, um, yeah. And a lot of people down there did did sacrifice a lot um, for me and did really like help me along the way. I mean, the my first um, transition into preseason wasn't an easy one for me. I was mm. unfit. Um, I wasn't a strong kid like in terms in the gym. Um, I was homesick. I yeah. was battling with a little bit of depression, and um, you know some blokes really helped me get through those times and. I had one of my best years in uh, rugby league sort of off the back of that and um, was fortunate enough to debut. Um, so, yeah, Canberra will always hold a special place in my heart and it yep. does feel weird going back there, but it does help. A lot of them blokes that I did play with have moved on. Yep. Uh, there's still yep. a few there, like uh, Pops Papa, and Jackie White. And, um, I know Jared Croker's injured, but he was there when you Yeah, was, yeah. Jordan Rapana yep. and Elliot Whitehead. Uh, they're, and they're all, you know, especially Jack uh, White and... Um, are all really good mates of mine. Um, I, I lived with Jack for a year and um, might have been a bit longer. And, you know, he was sort of one of them guys that helped drag me out of those situations. I had a, I had a very similar transition into grade. I come in and I wasn't that fit. I was going well at 20s and stuff, but I wasn't that fit. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I was very, very poor. Um, in fitness-wise, I wasn't strong and I wasn't that skillful. And because I wasn't fit, my skill would go out the window pretty quick. Anyway, a couple of weeks into the preseason – 
and I was probably trying to be someone I wasn't kind of thing. Yeah. And it was actually Barney who pulled me aside one day and gave me a really nice chat. And it sort of stuck with me for, for a while and it just sort of changed my whole mindset on what I had to do. Yeah. And – yeah, it's really. I think that shows real good qualities of a leader. Yeah. In Barnes, uh, without trying to pump your tyres up too much, mate, because I know you don't like talking about that. But yeah, uh, you always like seeing your fellow Group Three boys. Yeah. Group Three till we die, mate. Oh well, yeah. Well, that was the question I had for you, mate. Like you, and this is why the the region loves you, and why the fan base loves you. You love a rip in. Mm. You'll you know we're ripping. <laughs> we're doing it, and every game. You put in that effort and you're our enforcer. Mentally, before you play every game, like you know that it, you're going to be doing the tough stuff for, for most of the game. Is there something that you have to do to get you in the mindset to do that consistently every single game to get yourself you know, physically ready as well to be able to you know, do that for the team? Yeah, um, people laugh about my pregame. Your prep, ritual. yeah. Well, I was just my, thinking about that. Uh, I'm not the person people <laughs> think I am okay, yeah. uh, before a game. Like... Being aggressive and, like, I love the physicality of the game. Yeah. I love the contact. Um, I've never shied away from that. But it does come naturally to me yeah. um, without – I don't know if that sounds a bit weird or not. No, no, no. no. Well, when I came to the club, I was like, obviously, you've watched you play footy. Yeah. And when you're out there, it's, you know, full on. Yeah. So I was like, I wonder what this guy's going to be like. like no. you know. And then yeah, yeah. you turned out to be the nicest guy in the world. And I was like, okay, that's, you must <laughs> yeah. flick a switch or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, no, like, it is literally just a switch. Uh, it's yeah. how I've played in my rugby league my whole life. Um, and I've actually had to tone it back a lot. I was very aggressive. I, yeah. You know, you think I'll give penalties away now and get suspended. Like, it used to be ten times worse. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I still have something to work on every day to clean up. But and it was funny because that was back at Group 3 where you could get away with ten yeah, times worse. Yeah, stuff, yeah, so. yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I used to do some shock at that. I'd have some parents yell, you know, send him off and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. They were ripping me, you know. But um, in terms of back to your point before the yeah. game, mate, I joke around. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm real relaxed and um, – you know, if I have to listen to music, it's Backstreet Boys yeah, I, I, and stuff like that. So the very first <laughs> no. time I ever shared the field with Barn was in a trial match with us the Dragons out at Maitland. Yeah. I remember he was singing 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton <laughs> and <laughs> had his earphones in. And this is like 15 minutes before warm-up. And here I am. That is very first, intimidating. First NRL trial, I was wigging out and Barney's yeah. just, you know, <laughs> just grooving to 9 yeah. to 5. Because uh, if I like pump myself up and um, – do all of that like certain blokes have to do that i understand because it doesn't come as natural to them but for me i play the game in my head 40 times and i go out there and run around like with a chookie's head cut off yeah and i'm no good for anyone and um that's been my sort of one of my biggest sort of weaknesses is sort of pump myself up too much so now as i've gotten old i've just learned to just relax and play the game when you first come to the night spans from raiders there's actually there was actually there was a chance that you weren't going to come to the Knights because there was a whole big contract distribution, like a distributor, I guess you could say. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I, um, before I debuted for the Raiders, um, geez, was that back in 20? I had it here somewhere, 15, mate. Uh, 2015, 2015, yeah. So the end of that season, sorry, before I debuted, I'd uh, re signed and um, I thought it was all done, whatever. And then um, I got a call. It, um, what, it was in the off-season saying that um, my contract hadn't, hadn't been registered. And, um, yeah, and I was pretty homesick in that at the time and um, was sort of looking to uh, – I thought, well, I, I was just I, sort of a bit young and immature, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably right. And just thought, you know, I'd take a sort of an easier option and getting out type thing. And, um, and then Camera ended up – Finding my contract um, that hadn't been registered and registering it, and um, I had to honour it, and um, which is you know I did, and I went down there to my credit, I, I still I ripped in, um, mm. you know, and I trained my hardest and got myself ready for the season, and um, yeah, and then the season rolled round and. Sticky was off me at this stage. Yeah. It's, um, it's not which like sticky. I, I don't not like Sticky. Nah, but I, I, don't, I don't blame him either. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you, this my side and his side of the story. And, um, mate, his credit, he rang me up and said he doesn't know what happened with it, mate. Like, you know, I still, you're stealing my plans and that. And I still went against it. So, yeah. Um, and then I um, went down there. I, was, I think it was like 18th man for like literally 10 weeks in a row. I was playing half a game of Reggie's and then, yeah. you know, warming up. And, and this then, was back in the day when 18th men 
there was no chance of playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't sit on the bench with a bib back then. You know, they just warm up and then have yeah, a shower, have mate. A shower. Yeah, have yeah. a shower, put your polo on. Yeah, so, and then um, that happened. And then I thought I was finally going to get me chance here. There was a heap of injuries, you know. He's got no choice but to play me. And um, he brought a guy down from Mounties at New South Wales Cup and brought, played him over top of me. And I thought, oh, God, like, yeah. this is how my career yeah. is going to finish. And um, then, yeah, to stick his credit, we had a good chat. Um, he gave me a good little roasting and um, I copped it. And we, we moved on. He, he was a man and he just, yeah, gave me permission to go. And, um, mm. yeah, I, I met with a few clubs and, um, you know, Brownie and was here at the time and him and Sticky were good mates and um, it worked out that I'd come back home. Yeah, yeah. So. was there any other like why Newcastle? You, you met with a couple of clubs. What, yeah, what did Newcastle attract you? Uh, obviously, just being close to home, Crooks. Like, yeah. and I'm an hour and a half from home. At yeah. the time, I needed that a lot. Uh, my mum's massive in my life. Like, I'm the biggest mum's boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate. I like I had her driving down to Canberra, and like I was yeah, literally. Wow. Friday after so I was finishing training and driving home, come back Sunday night. Like yeah. that's how bad I yeah. was. Yeah. And um, all my mates I went to school with are here too. So probably not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to make it in rugby yeah. league, but uh, yeah. So that 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 was sort of the main thing at the time. That's what I wanted. Um, yeah. I wanted to make it in rugby league and have all my mates around me and have my family there. So okay. that, that was a probably the big reason. Um, yeah. Saying that, I had a few other clubs that. One comps yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, yeah. So yeah. I knocked back I knocked You know There was sort of A half chance I could have gone to Melbourne um, Met uh, Madge At the Rabbitohs Yep I uh, went for a coffee With him And um, Yeah There's just some funny things That happen in rugby league Through your decisions you make Like I knocked uh, Cronulla back in 20s uh, For 20s contract To go to Canberra yeah. Which yeah. I'm grateful I did But um, You know Shep one of our old assistant coaches, yeah, he was the yeah. uh, coach at the time and uh, for the 20s, and he always goes, oh, well, they won a comp a few years <laughs> after that. So, uh, yeah, so he rubs it in. But, um, yeah. No, I mean, so. it, it is crazy how, you know, decisions, forks in the road, things that how could, you know, the domino effect of that. But we are glad that you came. Oh, aren't we ever? Oh, so um, am I. <laughs> Our other side of the coin of what happened in uh, Canberra, something else happened where, you know, it, there was a lot of just brute speed, foot speed coming <laughs> out of it. But that's my segue into our next read boys did you know that athletes foot is our podcast partner for today uh i did i did know that because i've seen the right <laughs> <laughs> well it's here our athletes foot's biggest store ever it's now opening at the katara homemaker center i don't know how many stores the athletes foot have jimmy right. can we get that up it's across from the Dan Murphy's. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. It's the biggest ever. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get a number on that. Uh, the athlete's foot has taken fit to a whole new level with the biggest range of footwear from ASICS, Sakani, New Balance and more. Equipment, accessories and the only fit range of clothing for trail, running, yoga and gym. The athlete's foot, biggest store ever, now open at Katara Homemakers Centre. Now that's fit. How many stores do they have, Jimmy? 130 locally owned. 130, 130 locally owned 130 of the best Good on So it. it's the biggest They'd be Get down to Katara And have a look yeah. Now Yeah yeah. Getting on the hoof Yeah let's get let's First get try with Matt Croker Yep On the weekend nah. Barney How What did you think that? How good was that Mate I was riding him home <laughs> Like you know, I had a million bucks on him I didn't think he had the legs <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I thought it was Wugok in the way coming down <laughs> Better get run down But well, he held on That's the funny thing Because I don't know if you remember But when I got it, and we're all walking back, and Clem's a funny character, and I just, <laughs> mate, I'm walking back into the huddle, and nowadays they can award a try, and then you hear the ref go, yeah, 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 you know, have a look at his whistle and goes, look, it's under review, and when it's under review, rarely ever gets awarded. Anyway, we're walking back, and Clem's staring at me with his beating eyes, <laughs> going, "You didn't get it, did you?" And I said, <laughs> "I said, yeah, I did." And he goes, "What you slam the ground for?" And I just said, "Oh, mate, I'm just, it's just a reaction. I'm pumped up." And he goes. Oh, I don't think you got it. And, <laughs> and then Jace, Jace got on the back of that, Jacob Safidi, yeah. and goes, Crocs, you get it or not? And I said, boy, I promise you I got it. I'm yeah. just not yeah. sure if I was on side. Yeah. And uh, and then as we were saying that, we looked up to the screen, it said, try confirm. Yeah. So. so with that, like when you're running off a kick, yeah. for people that don't play the game, mm. are you is Kalen telling you to run or are you telling Kay you're there, kick the ball because you've got a line? No, nah, well, I don't want to sound like <laughs> <laughs> like I'm taking all the credit But no, no. I've seen where Xavier Savage was Yeah Who's the fullback And they just had Elliot Whitehead sent to the bin Yeah And they were playing it on our left side So I knew they would have been spaced out And I 
I was sort of saying to Kay when he caught it, I just said, just, just kick it, just kick it. And then yeah. as we were sort of running, I was getting a bit more animated. It's like, kick it, kick it, kick it. Yeah. And then he kicked it. And it, look, to be honest, Jay, and Barney will testament to the, it. It all happens pretty quick. Yeah. It does, yeah. Like, to say that it was planned is... Yeah, yeah and yeah. it wasn't planned. It was more just on the spur of the moment. And um, like Barney, you know, you could... Yeah, it's a bit of instinct takes over. Yeah. Um, like, and, you know, when you when you don't see anyone in behind, like, it's sort of exactly what Hudson Young did to us again, like, later on. That yeah. Then, you know, yeah. he's obviously seen no one there, put it on the toe yeah, yeah. and got the bounce. And, you know, very similar to what Croaks has done. Obviously, he's just had KP kick it. So, yeah. Meanwhile, I was spraying Randy for not passing yeah. the ball. <laughs> <so. laughs> it probably helps that I know KP so well as we sort of just. Oh, dude, that was so some, good. See sometimes you just sort of think mm. yeah. what each other's thinking. Oh, ha- having one of your good mates set you up for yeah. your first try yeah. must have been yeah, that was awesome, mate. KP Odie once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gave him one in the Broncos, so we're even now. Uh, also from that game, <laughs> big Dave Clemmers kicked it. Oh. And look. In the trial game that we did earlier in the year against the Bulldogs, where he threw that short ball to Jaira to score, mm-hmm. I said, mate, Clem in the seven. That yeah. is quoted. Jimmy quoted. <laughs> he's kicked the ball. I was like, that's interesting. Let's see where this goes. Now, do you reckon his kicking license has been uh, revoked or it continues on from that kick? Oh, it shouldn't be. Clem's the most skillful big guy yeah. I know. Like he, he obviously, he's got the boys, um, his little kids and, Mate, he plays footy with them basically every afternoon, so he yeah. want to be skillful. So he's he, doing ball skills every day, no matter uh, what. He loves it, coaching, you know, and playing yeah. and kicking and passing yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So he, he loves it, Clem. He loves yeah. training. And it almost came off too. Oh, it and was, he's smart. He's yeah. smart, mate. If you watch him, he actually catches it, sums up the situation, yeah, yeah. sees Eddie and goes, put it on my left boot here, and Eddie might be a check. Mate, yeah. he's a smart footballer, eh, Barnes? Oh, he's so <laughs> smart. You don't – because he's a prop, yeah. runs the ball up and, you know, he tackles. People don't sort of – Give him the credit for yeah. how smart yeah. he is. Yeah. But he's real smart and like he his skill is some of the best I've seen yeah. for big man, eh? Like he um mate, I, I like you love running off Clem because when he runs people, you know, in front of him he tracks two, three defenders. Yeah, yeah, every time. And he's just got that nice little short ball and yeah. a little easy landing for you. Yeah. But um And he's good at sort of getting that contact, turning his body, oh, getting oh, one hand mate. free. If you find a bit of a hole, he's, he, he's, he's also mate, he's also sickingly funny. Oh <laughs> he's, he, he's the funniest bloke in the team. Yeah. Yeah. Easily <laughs> like he oh, And mate. with with that knowledge, just be like just comes all this little like query jokes like he <laughs> mate, he'll rattle off players in the Super League from the eighties and just start <laughs> saying their name randomly at training. I don't know what it is, but you, it's so you good. will not get someone who knows footy yeah. more than him. Yeah, wow. Well, you know, we've got to get him on. Not oh. just footy, but like yeah. just other sport like random be, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he'll be rattling off old NFL coaches from the seventies just <laughs> <laughs> for no reason but just to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he loves his lookalikes. Like, yeah, yeah. He, like say, he thinks you look like someone. He'll yeah. rattle off this random name who yeah. played for, you know, played San Antonio six Spurs yeah. back in 1988. <laughs> yeah. like he's, oh, he's funny, man, big Clem. Yeah, he's a, he's a good fella. He's a big good fella. So, boys, uh, we're in rep round yep. at the moment. So, there's a lot going on there. Uh, one of our, uh, you know, we've got a couple of boys in the under 90s origin. We've got a couple of representatives in the NRLW origin match. We've got uh, Milf is playing for Samoa. Yep. Uh, which is really cool. Obviously, we've got, you know, Gags and, and Kalen in the Queensland side. Um, is there a game that you boys are looking forward to? Obviously, everyone's looking forward to Origin. That's straight up. But, like, is there anything else that you're going to see sort of this weekend that you're looking at watching and getting around? Yeah, obviously, Origin's the main one. Yeah. Um, you know, exciting to see KP and Gags go again. Obviously, New South Wales and myself, but... Um, like, we want them to do... Good, good, but not, not too, too good. good. You want to score a couple of tries yeah. each and yeah. play really well and <laughs> yeah. you know get beat on the hood. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and come out unscathed. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, <laughs> that's a good one. But obviously, seeing Milf play, um, you know, for Samoa, it's um, you know, it's something. Obviously, he's proud of yeah. um, his heritage, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him go go well in that arena, um, the representative arena. He's sort of, uh, I think, he's starting to. Play some really good footy, Milf. Yeah. Um, especially, he, he's had a, a tough sort of, I guess, 12 months, maybe even a little bit longer. Yeah, um, so, close to it. Yeah, it's just good to see him enjoying life and his footy. So, I, I, you know, I've been and very grateful to reconnect with him. Yeah, well, I know I've been lucky enough to be able to, obviously, through the club with what I do here, track his journey in the media team. So, I got to sort of film him coming to Newcastle for the first time, his mm. first training session. So, in a way, I've seen sort of 
what he the was like when journey. he got here. Yeah. yeah, and man, like he's worked so hard. Oh, oh yeah, they <laughs> flogged him, hey. Like, <laughs> poor oh, but to his credit, mate, he just got about it. Oh yeah, like as hard as it was, he's not much of a talker in general, but no, he just no, got he on. Does, with it. He doesn't win. He just no, just keeps it to his opinion to himself, yeah. and yeah. Uh, he just goes about his business. And that's why he's like he's probably played. He's nearly two hundred games. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. His two hundred is around eighteen or nineteen. I yeah. think it is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Eighteen. So he would have reached yeah. it. Already, if it wasn't for his uh, for his bit of time out of the game, but yeah. no, I'm keen to see Milf play for Samoa. You know, it's it's always a special time of the year when culture and sport mix. Yeah. I reckon, and it's good in all aspects of sport, not just rugby league, but rugby league really do do it really good. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we'll go through with all the all the cultural games at the start, and then we'll have the bit, the origin at the end. And I think it's a really good week for footy lovers and. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for So Milf. we're all New South Welshmen yes. Proud New South Welshmen right. What do we think? What do we think of all the nah, changes? I, th- I think we get it done over there Yeah, yeah. the changes I'm not too worried about um, I just think we get it done over there I'm hoping we get it done yeah. I'm, I am a little bit worried about the changes um, I, I don't think it's an overreaction You've obviously got to make changes when you lose But yeah. um, I am worried about it Like it's... Um, Especially sort of losing um, Jack Whiten as well. Yeah, like he yeah. he's a big summer. out. Yeah. And he played so well in that first game. Oh, he's, he's a, a weapon. Player, yeah. He's a weapon. You could put him anywhere. So, uh, But they've obviously replaced some really good players. So yeah. well, hopefully we're very hungry and um, yeah, get the job done. I've got a little question for you, Barnes. Sorry, just back to your footy. You represented the New South Wales residents twice, yeah? Yeah. I couldn't find too much on it last night. I was trying to find it. I know one year was 2015. Maybe the other year would have been 2014. 2015 and 16, maybe. 16, yeah, yeah, 15 and 16 represented the uh, New South Wales residents. Was that, how was that? Yeah, it was good. Uh, that was sort of my first um, representative uh, jersey, I guess. Um, yeah. In terms of New South Wales rep, um, I'd sort of played for New South Wales country and stuff before yeah. 20s and that. Um, but yeah, that was the first time. Um, Maybe you, you probably forgot to count a couple of tries I scored in that. <laughs> <game>. <laughs> so I did. I was lucky enough. Like I said, I was running off Mitch Corny. Yeah, yeah. She set me up for a couple. And um, yeah, no, nah, it was good because um, you got to play against some blokes in Q Cup as well. And yeah. like, remember in 2015, uh, I was lining up, I marked to go up against Kenny Bromwich. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so, and he'd played great. Yeah. And um, so he's sort of, you know, another bloke that. I didn't rub shoulders with the New South Wales Cup sort of thing, so um, yeah, it was it was it was good experience um, getting away at camp and meeting some new blokes, and uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, um, Barney, we've sort of been talking about your career and your time in Newey. One massive thing has happened since you've been in Newcastle, and that's you've become a father to young Nate. Mm. How's that going, mate? Oh, it's awesome. That's uh. <laughs> I wish I did it sooner. Yeah. Um, would it, would you can it, sit this one out if you want, mate. Yeah, no, <laughs> We've got no, a couple I'm, of dads here. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Floor is yours, uh, boys. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, – oh, he's keeping me on my toes. Um, it's scary to think how quick they grow, but yeah. um, as you'd know, Jay, but he, he's awesome, mate. I couldn't ask for a, a better son. Um, you know, my wife, Claire's. you know, she's doing a terrific job. Um she obviously does a lot of the heavy lifting. I <laughs> reap a lot of the rewards. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I come home from training, and, you know, he's fed and he's yeah. been entertained all day. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, that type of thing. But, you know, it's just awesome for me. I'm learning every day. Um, and just, yeah, really enjoying it. Really enjoying the My favourite part about it is seeing how my family react to him. Yeah, um, yeah. My sisters, my mum yeah. um, and Claire's family. Like, it's, you know, we, we've had so many a great – Memories with him already um, And he's still got a whole life to go So Just looking forward to seeing the man he develops to I saw a photo with him and your dog too Did you post that the <laughs> other day? Yeah So they're getting along? Oh At the start Or well, still yeah. now well, My dog uh, He's American Staffy yeah. And um, Mate He was that jealous of me <laughs> <laughs> Like And Like I, Another little story um, I was playing with Nate And um, Bailey was sort of My dog Was Um he was sort of a bit angry yeah. And he went over and grabbed a toy And started headbutting me Trying to get me to play with him That's <laughs> yeah. how jealous you would get yeah. So I'd have to go play with him But then um, Put him in his little It's not a high chair But a little chair That sort of tucks him in So he sits upright And yeah. just got some things on TV To help him And um, I turn me back And walk out of the And turn around And Bailey's laying next to him So oh, uh, nice, uh, nice. Yeah it was a nice little moment um, You know they're, they're starting to get along now And 
Nate's starting to make a few more noises, which is yeah. uh, Bailey. It's, uh, uh, it's awesome. Where'd the name Nate come from? Anywhere or just just on the spot? No, it was literally just on the spot. Yeah. Um, you'll laugh. I, me and Claire, we we button heads over names. Yeah. Like she liked names like Ollie and stuff like that. And for me, oh, I'm sort of I like the sort of real strong name. Yeah. And yeah. we we couldn't. No disrespect to any of the Ollies no, out there. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no disrespect at all. Um, but I like. You know the, the strong sort of names, and um, I think it was two days before he's born. Yeah. Um, Nate and it's all right, yeah, I like that, and that's beautiful. What we come up with, yeah, just so, stuck with it. Yeah, he's got John Maine and um, John's her father. Yeah, and Maine's after my grandmother who passed away. Her name was Barbara May, and I could, didn't want to give him sort of May, so we made the name Maine. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. And just you know, it's got that May. Yeah, so little tip of the a, cap. Yeah, yeah so lovely. yeah, my then sort of help. Um, did a massive part in raising me uh, yeah. and my sisters. Um, you know, we when my parents split up, we lived with her, and you know, she took me to school basically nearly every day and yeah. that yeah, type nice. of thing. So, um, we lost her uh, just over a year ago now. So, yeah. yeah, um, I did the same thing, man. I was really close to my grandmother on my dad's side. Yeah, um, she was Barbara Ann. Oh, right. So oh, my f- my eldest is Ruby, so yep. she's Ruby Ann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. So no, same, cool, same thing. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, it's that's cool great. when you can pass that down yeah. to the next generation. Yeah. You know, keep it sort of in the in the family. It's Would really you cool. say that's your uh, biggest achievement in life? Definitely, man. Yeah, mate. definitely. Um, man, it's um, it's made me grow up heaps, Crokes, yeah. and like it's. Uh, I get pretty emotional. It's, it sounds weird yeah. talking about no, no, one hundred percent, man. There's been times, man. I come home after a big day and. You know, the emotions are running high. I, get, <laughs> I just look at him and start tearing up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's so good, bro. It's crazy to think that, you know, Claire and I can make, you know, yeah, such yeah, a yeah. special little yeah. human. And, um, yeah. It gives you a perspective, hey. Oh, man. And what's really important, yeah. it just it and just kind of yeah, brings it all they in. They need, like, how much they depend on you. Like, yeah. it, it's crazy. Like, it's, um, man, it's just awesome. Loving every moment of it. Yeah. And, um yeah, it's very enjoyable. I remember when you first had Nate and you come into training, mate, you're just, you're just this different bloke, you're glowing, it was so good, and then that sort of started to wear off. I could tell you're a bit tired. You come <laughs> in and go, you go, oh, mate, Nate slept for about half an hour oh, last night. <laughs> We're about to go run 400. <laughs> mate, I felt, oh, he's had a tough start of life. Like, he, um, he got COVID. Uh, two weeks old Early Yeah days. wow He handled it better than me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That funny. was during our pre-season Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I laid in bed And I was like oh, Like making that many noises And um, <laughs> I couldn't sleep Because I was sweating And oh, like I was man, freezing And geez. locked up But yeah he got that And then he got the flu as well um, And that was sort of about Eight to ten weeks And um, yeah So he's had a little tough start But he's going well in true Barnett style, though, just got on with it, didn't he? Oh, he gets on with it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, boys, obviously, yeah, just talking about rep round. The round after, it's our home game against the Titans, and it is the Beanie for Brain Cancer round. Um, obviously, Mark came in and spoke to you guys uh, last week, which we're all there for. That was awesome. Um, obviously, he, you know, you can buy your beanies, you can get around it, you can come to the game, all that sort of stuff. I think over $20 million has been raised for this foundation since its inception. How important is it for you boys to to have that sort of connection with Mark? Because obviously he's a Knights old boy, but also support the cause that he's, that he's uh, you know, the charity's going through there. Yeah, it's obviously a great cause, Jay. Um, what he's been able to do in that space, um, been awesome. Um, nothing short of amazing and how he lives his life. And, um, you know, he it's a credit to him. He's a... Super strong human being. Oh, yeah. um, you won't get a nicer bloke. Oh. He's just fantastic. And, um, yeah, it's just a really great cause. Um, and it's great that the NRL will get behind him now. Oh, um, yes, it's, like, yeah. it's just – it's huge. And, you know, I know one day they'll have a massive breakthrough in that department because mm. of all the hard work exactly he's right. put in. So um, he's definitely, you know, doing his job on this planet. And um, apart from that, he's um, – Got some nice racehorses too. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Tacky Advantage. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening, make sure you jump on and uh, go get yourself a Mark Hughes. Yeah, Beanie, you, yeah, male or female. Yep, and I think you can get them on his website. You can get them at Coles. They're yeah, everywhere at the they're moment. Everywhere, so, everywhere. So definitely go out there and grab a beanie. Get to the game versus the Titans. Uh, it'll be it'll be good. It'll be a good one to go to. Um, now. We're doing a new segment. Yeah, we've got a couple of new segments here. Bart, You're our so. guinea pig. Yeah. So this should be good. Overrated, underrated. So you just give your answer, mate. You give a little reason to so why. You, yeah. and, and I'll back you up. I'll follow you All in right. the war, brother. So. Sweet. So the first one we've oh, got. I know this one. 
Pop Smoke. Oh, Pop Smoke. <laughs> Mass- Over or under? Massively under. <laughs> under. Massively. Um, Why is that? Obviously taken from us too soon. Yep. Um, I do have a tattoo of him on my leg. <laughs> um, I, and I do I do love Pop Smoke. Um, if you'll coach and um, help me out here, but boys asked me to put my phone on in gym. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a playlist that I listen to of about oh, 20 songs. Um, for for Jim and I reckon about fifteen off my pop smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love pop smoke. All right, that's a good one. Uh, next one, daylight savings. Uh, over or under? So I'm a bit of a bit. I, I was overrated, but after the last year, uh, I reckon it's underrated now. Eh? Just Why? Uh, the extra couple of hours in the Arvo, I like mowing my lawn and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, and like, yeah. So I got to do that in daylight. Yeah. Um, but before, I couldn't stand. I thought it was massively overrated. <laughs> Mine changes. <laughs> when it when it kicks in and we get the extra hours, underrated. Yeah. When it kicks back and you got to go back to overrated. getting – And I'm like, ah. Over. Yeah. You know? When you lose that hour of sleep or whatever, <laughs> it is horrible. Here's horrible. another one for you, Barnes. Country music. Underrated or overrated? Underrated. Um, um, I love me country music, um, apart from me pop smoke. Yeah, see, so uh, this is the funny thing, because <laughs> yeah. I always knew Barney for country music and sing-alongs and that, and then yeah. one day he comes in fresh out of off-season with a pop smoke. <laughs> 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 oh, what's going on here? Just keeping right. them guessing. Mate, I, I like all music, yeah, eh? yeah. Uh, but I'm massive on country music. It's, um, yeah, like, obviously being a country boy, I've always so <laughs> been able to think I'm sort of some form of country music, even though I can't sing, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, country music's the way. Uh, easy to have a beer with, and oh. um, everyone everyone likes it. Mullets. Oh, under uh, over because you've got look. I wouldn't say it's a mullet, but it's got mullet tendencies. Bit of, bit of party, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. like uh, a gathering, yeah, 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 small yeah. gathering, yeah, yeah small <laughs> gathering. Yeah. At the back. Quite uh, a couple of ones, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> she wouldn't be a keeper if it was a mullet. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, look, oh, oh. oh. Underrated, but um, fairly get, rated. Could it be fairly, 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 fairly rated? rated. Yeah, yeah, that's how I'd say because yeah. you get some of them long ones, mate. And yeah, <laughs> well, they're a bit questionable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Last one, Will Ferrell. Oh, <laughs> he's underrated. I reckon he's hilarious. <laughs> he's <so man>. good. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he, he's one of the all-time, isn't he? <laughs> he's so <laughs> good. Will's the man. The amount of times Step Brothers and that gets quoted at oh, training. Well, that's <laughs> obviously one of his best movies, eh? Yeah, yeah. You know? nice. And uh, Blades of Glory, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> uh, now, we've got one more new segment. Again, Guinea Pig Barn, you're on. We uh, jumped on the Instagram story, Croaks and I. Put it out to the people. What do you want to ask the great man? And we've got a couple here. Now, there's a couple of names on this sheet that I'm the, a bit sus on. Yeah, but you're aware of. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we're going to ask anyway. So the first one uh, looks like it's from Joel Southgate, 22. We know Southie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Good man, loyal supporter, always turns up to train and got a mm. wrestling belt that has Knight symbols on it. Oh, nice, man. nice. Good man, Southie. Yeah. So what are your, some of, of your favourite memories whilst playing for the night so far? Oh, uh, yeah, well... Apart from the trip aways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trip, trip aways always good. Uh, nah, look, yeah. Um, I got the, um, off the field, um, but still related to footies, um, the Tony Badiris medals, player of the years. Two-time um, winner. Yeah, so that that was sort of pretty cool for me. Um, and then your milestones and that. Um, one that sort of, um, you know, he probably doesn't, Realise this, but uh, old Fitz, um, yeah, we played SG ball together. Um, mainly played one or two games, and um, but he did his shoulder or something back then. And uh, sort of being able to play with him again was sort of one of the highlights. And there's a couple other blokes at the time, like Luke Yates, um, you know, we've got me and Yatesy, real good mates, and um, stayed mates. And um, sort of getting to play with um, those blokes again was uh, a bit awesome. of a highlight for me, yeah. And mate, there's heaps, like, I've been here for. Me seven seven seasons, seven yeah. Season. yeah. So, like, yeah, like the semi finals were good. Um, you know, obviously, sort of crazy times with COVID, but yeah. um, you know, like that, that was sort of a highlight. Would have liked to have won them. We were sort of in front there on one of them and beat by a couple of points in the other one, but um, yeah, it's sort of been 
awesome. There's been a couple of home games there too. Um, played the Roosters one night. Uh, that was a Thursday, oh, Friday night. I remember night. that. Junior yeah. scored under the post. Oh, yeah. Hacked oh, mate, that, stadium. that was... Indigenous round it yeah. might have been. Could have yeah. been. Yeah, that, that was one of the highlights for me. Yeah, like maybe it was back in 2019. Could yeah, have been, I, I was on the hill that game. Yeah. I thought we won the GF. It was oh, the greatest yeah. night of my life. That's what it was like. Yeah. That was when Piercy kissed the, sh- yeah. kissed the kissed emblem. The yeah, it was yeah, the best. Because yeah. I remember during that week, I remember Trent Robinson sort of said, oh, Piercy will always be a rooster. And yeah. Then, and I think that just sparked a little something. The fan base went mental when and then when he, when he scored, he scored right under the post. Kiss the best. Oh, yeah. mate, it's the best. You don't Good game. Piercy, oh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, this one is from a, a Pete Goulet who we're familiar with. Well, Pete Gourmet, yeah, Gourmet on Instagram, called, but we know himself. who you are, Pete. Mm. <laughs> He's a bit of a jab at you, your band. What does the tattoo on your back mean? <laughs> <laughs> Funny story about yeah. this. It's a cover up. Um, I, I got a home Wait, job. Is it? Yeah, I got a home job uh, when I. God, I'm going to say I was about 15 or 16. Yeah. And a um, few of the winging boys were all there and um, we're having a few, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Top of a few soft drinks, yeah, of course. A few soft drinks. Yeah, and, uh, in the garage. Pull, yeah, decided to pull out a uh, homemade tattoo gun. And <laughs> yeah, the way they went. And um supposed to say Barnett. But it uh, had Barrett there. <laughs> oh, is that why the boys call you Barrett? At yeah, time? that's why Fitz. That's why Fitz calls you Barrett. Yeah, because when I was in SG Ball, um, it was SG. No, I was, it was covered up by then. But I think I told him the story. Yeah, right. Because it would have been pretty. A couple, a couple of boys would have seen it uh, when I was younger, like yeah. before SG Ball days. Of just yeah, how it's it was. funny. I see that tattoo. I didn't know I, that, and I'm trying to keep it together yeah. over here. That yeah, I, I see yeah. that tattoo every <laughs> single day, and I never knew yeah. it was a cover up. Well, it was. It did say. Barnett, but like the way they wrote it, it looked like Barrett. Yeah, and the like N, the N would like have looked the, like another yeah, R. Yeah, like a yeah. double R, yeah. E, double T. Yeah. There you go. And there's a star in that there, so yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but all we mates, like we got him, like um, mate Timmy Watson's got a good one. He's actually come out real. He was first one to go, and um, mate, he's looked pretty good. I think he's still got it. Like, he got Watson, and it's got dot to dot, which is his um, his old man's brand for his cattle. So yeah, okay, yeah, right. it's, uh, yeah, it's just something that we did, and um, those bloody yeah. soft drinks, mate. They'll make you they'll get you. Yeah, they'll, they'll get you every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one is from a very questionable character. Uh, Bailey Hillier is what his Instagram name is. He's said, hi, Barney. <laughs> Would you rather have red hair or a bad hairline? From your best mate, question mark. <laughs> I, uh, I really do like Bailey. Um, so he's not going to agree with me here because... My mum's a redhead. Okay. So is my sister. So is your sister. Yeah. And then Barney, and you got a little bit I got a little bit ginger. Ginger. Yeah. yeah, so... But I'm going to say... I'm going to back him up here. Yeah. I'm going to say the hairline. Yep. Um, because I know who he'd be coming at. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so I'm just going to back him up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Love that. Love <laughs> that. Good yeah. teammate. Yeah, yeah. Has yeah. Nate got a bit of ginger in him or not? Nah. He, his feature is a lot darker than me. Yeah, um, yeah, right. yeah. And like Claire, she's dark as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I don't think so, but he looks like he's going to get blonde coming through now. Ooh, so I, was little, blonde, I was blonde as a kid. So. Little surfer boy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, hopefully so. My love. Whitaker. She said, who is your best mate in the team? I think you sort of answered that before. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, Fitz is definitely, um, you know, my best mate and big, big clam. Um, both the Saps as well, um, mm. yourself, Heimel, uh, Brails, like I've sort of... It's hard, mate. He's been here seven with, seasons. Yeah, you get on with um, everyone. But yeah, sort of the Saps fits. They've sort of uh, been real good. I mean, De- Daniel was in my um, groomsman. Groomsman, yeah. Um, and Jacob should, you know, could have been there if it wasn't capped at numbers sort yeah. of thing. So, um, and a lot of it helps. Like all our um, partners are all friends. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, just those boys. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, boy, is that that wraps us up? I think. Yeah, mate Barnes. I want to thank you, man. I, I said it a little bit before. I've always looked up to you as a as a footy player, but now getting to know you as a mate and as a leader, um, it's pretty awesome that I get to share the field with the big big Barnett every week. It's um, it's pretty inspiring, and coming from the same area, mate, it's it's really good to be mates with you and um. Mate, thanks for coming on today. So yeah. that's where Croaks goes wrong, looking up to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, so I, I share Croaks' sentiment there, man. Like, obviously, I've 
been working here at the club for the last two seasons, but before that, obviously followed the club. I'm a Newcastle born and bred kid, so I love this place. So, mate, watching you play and what you've done for the team over the years, mate, it's just been it's been great to watch. And I think you encompass what this town is. You know, you're a hard worker. You get it done. You do the stuff that some people probably don't want to do. So, no, man, it's been a pleasure to watch you. And thanks for coming in today. Thanks, thanks for having me, boys. Appreciate that. Thanks, Barrett. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, Barney. All right, you can also get our entire back catalogue of Knights HQ on the Newcastle Knights website with new episodes dropping first on the app. You can download the app, turn on push notifications and be notified as soon as a new episode comes out. So as soon as we get this one up, you'll be notified. Obviously, thank you to Maxwell Recruitment and Training for bringing you this episode of the pod. Boys, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you next time. Thank you, JJ. Thank you.